So we've got one in here that is actually just a couple years older than you. <laughs> yeah. We're always working on this older stuff, but not trying to throw any shade, but. <laughs> customer, fell by the name of Max, young man. Actually a third generation customer. I've done work for his grandpa, for at least his uncle, and now Max there. Said he's wanting to restore his grandpa's old truck. It's a 1961 Apache pickup. I don't know a whole lot about it other than he told me he had had someone else do this engine. Claims it ran about 10 miles and locked up. He has had the valve cover off, told me it has a bent push rod. He has had the pan off, told me he took a couple bearings off, couldn't see anything really wrong with it. I don't know why he didn't take this back to the shop that originally did this engine. Maybe there's a little more to the story here than what I've got. Kind of looked this thing over and like I say, it's supposed to be a 1961 Apache pickup. But looking at the casting date here, I-2756, I think that's September the 27th of 1956. So obviously this is not the original block out of his 1961 pickup. On the pad here by the distributor where there's supposed to be some identification numbers, you can see here some of this has been kind of ground off as an M9265. I don't think that's anything that GM would have stamped on there. I'm guessing that some rebuilder along the way has done that. And, you know, from 1956 till now, uh, geez, 67 years, who knows how many times this block could have been worked on. I pulled out our uh, ARA head and block book here, just kind of check out what the casting numbers are. 3837004. This book just lists it as being 49 to 62. Actually, its model is a Biscayne, so maybe that's what it was when it was new. Maybe not. I don't know how accurate this book really is. Going around here to the head, casting number 3836848. Book shows that to be either a 235 or a 261. 49 to 62 on the 235, 59 to 62 on a 261. And that's a common number. I remember seeing that on others. We at least have a, a fairly close to the correct mm -hmm. head and block for a 61 pickup. Uh, I don't think it's anything he's worried about numbers matching. He just wants to put grandpa's, picture, grandpa's pickup back together. So we're so. going to tear into it and see. Maybe it'll just be something simple. Maybe that... it's something simple. Maybe it needs a whole lot done to it. We don't know till we get it apart. I'm just a bit puzzled by the bent push rod, and I don't think a bent push rod would cause it to lock up the engine, but he said it is locked up. I haven't tried to turn it but uh, I'm gonna take his word for it at this point and see what we find. The stress of having something go wrong on your project car might make you feel like pulling your hair out, and that can be a problem if you're like me and your hair is already starting to thin. But luckily, Keeps has the solution. Keeps is an online subscription service that makes it easy and affordable to treat male pattern baldness. Keeps makes it more convenient than ever before by delivering a personalized treatment plan that's recommended by a licensed medical provider straight to your door. There's nothing to worry about if you're like me and you feel a little bit self-conscious about your hair loss, as treatments are delivered in discreet, non-branded packaging. You can receive expert care right from your home by messaging your medical provider or the Keeps care team anytime via their secure messaging portal. If you're looking to prevent hair loss, simulate hair growth, or you simply just want to take better care of the hair that you still have, Keeps has you covered. Keeps offers both of the FDA approved treatment options, as well as a two-in-one gel that combines both treatments. And according to clinical studies, treatments offered by Keeps are 90% effective at treating hair loss and can increase hair growth by up to 35%. I don't see why you wouldn't want to give it a try when it's this easy and affordable, but you don't have to take my word for it. Keeps has already helped nearly a million men keep their hair, with over 4,500 five-star reviews from happy customers. So remember, hair loss stops with Keeps. For a special offer to get started, head to keeps.com slash Jim's Auto or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Jim's Auto. Thank you to Keeps for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. Be funny if it turns smooth. Yeah, and it's all in this transmission. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first time. I get the feeling nothing that happens in this shop is the first time. <laughs> What's it like to have done this 41 years? <laughs> uh, it flew by. <laughs> I don't know how. Uh, it's not locked up. 
<laughs> no? No. So I wonder what the story is. Because he told me it's locked up. Well, I know he's had the valve cover off, messed around on the top end. He's had the bottom end, the pan off, messed around down there, taking some bearings apart. I say at this point, let's tear it down. If nothing else, we check everything out and basically just freshen it up again, yes. make sure everything's okay. I guess. I mean, he I just... went to the trouble to take it out, but that is not locked up. These old motors, called them the old stove bolt motors. And I don't know where that came from other than the fact that these things had what I know my dad always referred to as a stove bolt. Instead of a hex head, their screwdriver slot bolts. Why don't you grab a can there for us to throw some parts in. I wish I could find some safety glasses that didn't have a bifocal. <laughs> <laughs> it's practice for when you get old. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start a little pile here of the washers. Yeah. Okay, you ready for this? It's a big moment. Okay. Well, it looks like whoever did this did a pretty good job of cleaning everything. Uh, inside that valve cover looks nice. Nothing bad here. So where's this bent push rod? Is that maybe the one he has his head off? Yeah. There's a bent push rod. These rocker shafts are always a pain. If I remember right, there are four different style rock arms on here. Mm -hmm. There's uh, kind of left and right exhaust and left and right intake, the way yeah. they angle and the length of them and the way they curl over. And they've got this funny long stem on the end of the intake valves. It's funny how this stuff back in the day there's like stuff that's super simple, but whoever did yeah. this was on drugs. <laughs> yeah, the, the engine itself is super, sim super simple, but then how complicated they made a simple six cylinder rocker shaft. I mean, we go from motors that have the same rocker all the way through intake and exhaust, and then we come to this one. But look at the head, how they made the exhaust valve mm -hmm. canted in where the intake is straight up and down. Yeah. So this was some pretty high-tech stuff back, I don't know when they started this design, maybe in the 30s. Let's pull that shaft off there. And it'll come apart in two pieces here. Splits in the middle. I'm gonna at least kind of hold that together for right now. Okay, whoever built this engine, they did go to the trouble. They refaced the ends of all the rocker arms everything up to this point is looking like they attempted to do a good job anyway. Shaft has been polished. Let's go ahead and split this. Take that apart there. And now you're watching this because we've got to remember how to put that back together with all these washers and, and uh, springs. Yeah, looks like they talked, touched up the inside of the rockers on a home. It has some wear on it, but it has been polished, all the rough stuff taken off of it. You know, working on something this old, you can't always get all the parts you'd like to have. Sometimes you have to make do. If a guy could even find these rocker shafts, I'm sure the price is through the roof. So, you know, there's a trade-off there. Make do with what you can if you have to. Anyway, let's see here. Yeah, I think that's the, yeah, for some reason that push rod is bent. Let's remember, this is the one with the bent push rod. Now, if you'll notice, when I take these out, I'm pushing that push rod sideways, kind of at the bottom, as I lift it out of there, because I don't know if this engine would be one or not, but if you pull straight up, Sometimes you can have the lifter stick to the hmm. bottom of the uh, push rod with just with the oil suction there, and you'll pull it up and pull your lifter up out of place, and you may be having to dig into the motor deeper to put lifters back in where you didn't mean to pull them out of. 
So now that valve is stuck. Yeah. Look at that one there, I can pop it. That one I can pop it down. That one is solid. So let's get the head off of it and take the head apart and see what we find on that valve. And let's put a straight edge across there. It's stuck open a little bit. Well, that's what I thought it looked like. You got it? Yeah. Yeah. At this, this point, that valve is still either stuck open um, I'm assuming that's what it is, or it may have held it open and the piston uh, came up and kissed it and bent, bent it. it. It's tempting to use an impact to take that temperature sender out of there. I don't know if there's any truth to it or not, but I have been told that if you use a impact wrench on a sending unit, you can damage them due to the, the shock. <laughs> so I always try to use a hand wrench when I take something like a sending unit out. I am seeing all this. Did they use a whole bunch of uh, uh, ARP. <laughs> ARP lube all over in this thing? Because uh, I don't think it's looking like that's metal. When I first saw that, I almost thought, uh oh, we got a bunch of metal in here. Ultra torque. Yeah. Torque. That is their uh, yeah, just... ultra torque on everything. You use lots of it. So why is that slotted? Oh, that's what it is. That's the bolt that has to go in that position because the oil comes up through it. Mm. And, a, and that's, there's a galley here. It's drilled across to that little loop-de-doo tube. Yeah. So was it in the correct position? Yeah, it is in the okay. right position. So the oil comes up from the bottom end. <laughs> Actually, through this head bolt, yeah. a little tiny hole drilled in it. Oh, I missed a couple. We could have tested the uh, <laughs> yield strength of this. Let's not. So another thing I see here, we'll see this when we tear this head down, but from the factory, all these have for valve stem seals is just an O-ring mm -hmm. in underneath the keepers, just like your small block V8s. But somebody has added umbrella seals to this. Um, I don't think that would necessarily be a problem, but maybe they dried it up a little too much. You know, if I could train my left eye to use the bifocal, <laughs> and my right eye to not. Well, if you tip your head just right. I mean, if I'm tired, do I do get a lazy eye, so <laughs> if I could just train it to be a lazy eye. You got all the bolts out. Oh yeah, must be it's coming off. Uh-oh. Yeah. Are the valves supposed to leave imprints in the pistons? Uh-oh, 60 over, 60 too. 60 over. Yeah. We're out there a ways. Thanks, Obama. So it has hit piston. After the Don't. valve stuck open, or the, or the piston started chasing it shut because it wouldn't go shut. I'm going to say we've got a stuck valve guide there because the bent the push rod trying to push the valve open because mm -hmm. it was too tight but then it stuck open and the piston was chasing it back shut and it stamped 40 there so is that the last time it was rebuilt and they bored it 40 over or did they take 40 thousandths off the deck um. what does that mean yeah we're about top center on those Pistons there. I don't think that's 40 off the deck. I think uh, in a prior rebuild, prior life, it stamped was bored 40 over and they stamped the deck as 40. But at this point, we're 60 already. Yeah, we're 60 now. All right. And if it really does only have 10 miles on it, I think we can probably just hone the cylinders again and re ring it when we go back together. Nothing obvious here that would lead me to believe that. 
they had a bunch of hacks working on it. So that's F29-6, uh, so that's 56 also. So this was cast, what would that be, June? Is that right? A, B, C, D, E, F. Yeah, June uh, 29th of 56. So let's flip this up. Look at the other side here. This side down, gasket's on the right way. Looks like they used uh, some probably silver paint. Yeah, it's a copper gasket. At least copper on one, yeah, copper on both sides. They use silver paint on it, which is quite common. Felpro gasket? Um, I yes. I saw a logo. Yes, Felpro gasket. And looking at those pistons there earlier, appeared to be uh, Federal Mogul pistons. So I think it has quality parts in it. But that valve is, is stuck open for some reason. I'd say those are new springs. They don't appear to have wear on the mm -hmm. ends of them. So you said they did not have umbrellas on the intake from the factory? No. But they had the O-ring that they, yeah, the o -rings, seals off the top of the rotator, or the retainer, the retainer. basically. Yeah, the O-rings here are uh, what that would have had from the factory, but this umbrella has been added in addition to. There's our bad one. And these are not stuck. That's just having to uh, get past that O-ring, cut it, so it'll go on past. So let's kind of look at these one by one as we take them out. Just giving it the feel test here. Um, no excessive clearance. A little bit gummy. You smell it. See what you think. Why do I have to smell it? Because you always smell everything. <laughs> oh, I touched it to my nose. <laughs> I don't know. What they polish the stems with? Well, is that a new valve? That's a brand new valve. Well, they may have. Uh, I've seen shops do that. I thought maybe it looked like it was starting to gall, gall just a little bit, but it whatever it was wiped off, so I don't think so. Yeah, they, they definitely uh, polished all the stems, put quite a crosshatch on them. Feeling there, there's no excessive clearance, or I'd say maybe a little on the tight side. We need to get out the uh, gauges here and measure. Normally I wouldn't go to that much trouble, but since this ah. issues, ah, oh, crap. Go get a pigment. No, I had that old hydraulic cylinder there off one of my tractors laying there. And I purposely have had it sitting with that fitting up so it wouldn't leak oil. And sure enough, it got turned. Okay, so now let's look at the intakes. Again, I'm not feeling much clearance there. Are you sure those are brand new? Yeah, I'm sure they are. Why would you polish a brand new valve like that? Because some people think they like to put a crosshatch on, but it's pretty aggressive. I can feel that with my finger. But where I was going with that, look down here at the bottom, it's already completely well, worn that off. There and yeah. up high, so that's why I wondered. Yeah. 00308. So that's an SBI valve. Yeah, it's hard to read on there. I don't see the logic in polishing a brand new valve, but. Well, I have heard people think if you polish them and put that heavy cross hatch in them, It'll help pull oil, help hold oil, just like a cylinder wall does. Yeah. I for the for the five minutes while the wear accelerates and yeah, I I I certainly know if you're using guide liners, you don't want an aggressive cross hatch on the valve like that because I mean I run my fingernail on there, it feels like a file. Yikes. So now let's see if we can get this valve out. That is solid. Let's get something to drive against that with. This will get some uh, attention. You might want to put your safety squints on along with your uh, safety glasses. 
Man, that, that is in there. I mean, that might seem aggressive, but what else are you gonna do? Well, I see that we're, so that valve not, is toast, the guide is toast. If it's that stuck, nothing there is good anyway. I almost thought at first it was taking the guide with it. You gotta grab that so I don't knock those over. <laughs> yeah, uh. completely gold. Oh yeah, that one, that one really ran dry for some reason. Man, it just transferred metal all the way up and down. Should have put a little more crosshatch in the valve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A little more cross hatch so it'd be smaller. So what's your opinion on the way that valve galled that much? That has nothing to do with fuel. No, I don't think it was a fuel problem. I suspect, and we're gonna find out here in a little bit, I suspect they fit the valve guides just a little bit too tight. And then with putting uh, those umbrella seals on there, it kept it from getting enough oil. Why that one... Well, one's gotta go first. Yeah, one's gotta go first, but why that one went so much worse than the others, I wonder, we might want to look at the rocker shaft there too, see if there's some reason that we can see that it wouldn't have been getting oil to that. But again, we've had this discussion many times before. When we go back together with this, I'm going to put positive valve stem seals on it. Yeah. Because my belief is a positive valve stem seal will always wipe a little bit of oil onto the stem of this valve as it runs where this with this umbrella on there and as close as they fit uh, to the size of the guide there, I wonder if that um, umbrella didn't just flat starve it for oil. Yeah, there's, there's definitely different opinions on putting seals back on where seals never were. Yeah. Okay, so process here, they list one to three thousandths being acceptable on this for uh, guide clearance. Okay. I would consider one to be a little excessively, and that's intake and exhaust? That shows intake and exhaust. Okay. To me, one sounds awful tight, especially on the exhaust side. Three's getting up there where you're a little on the loose side. Had we done this the first time, I'd have probably hit somewhere in the middle on that. I'm gonna lock the mic down at that. I'm gonna transfer that over here to our dial bore gauge. Okay. About one and a half down in there. Yeah, in the tightest spots were one and a half. Of course, that's our bad one. We can't tell anything there. Well, they're pretty consistent. The exhaust, let's see what we've got there. The exhaust is about two. Yeah. Assuming the well, valve is. And the valve, I did measure the valve. It is a little bit smaller. So they probably had one and a half on the intake considering the size of the valve stem on the exhaust being a little smaller, we may be closer to two and a half on it. Gosh, I don't know what to think. Maybe a little tighter on the intake clearance than I would feel real comfortable with, but yeah. it's in spec. It'd, it'd probably be fine in a scenario where everything else stays, your oil always stays, you know, yeah. oiling, you don't get it too hot, all of that kind of stuff, but it didn't leave any room for... Yeah, there probably wasn't any room for any other air anywhere else on this. You know, it might also be a deal. Uh, we don't know what the carburetor was like. We don't know where the timing was set at. And again, I'm wondering about that rocker shaft. We're going to look real close at those rockers. But I almost wonder if right there is our culprit, that those umbrella seals just dried that up just a little too much. You know, even all the other exhausts, when you look at them... Intake. Or intakes, yeah, they're starting to show a significant amount of, not any transfer of metal, but it's it's starting to wear. You, you can see the wear pattern on there already, uh, which I think is quite a bit for 10 miles, like what they're saying this has. So we don't have a bad contact pattern, but I'm questioning their angle because it's like it's... Uh, leaving a real crisp line on the inside and if you have the interference angle the way the angles come together it should be contacting the outside first instead of the inside it's not all blue hasn't been excessively hot uh, does it look to you like they put exhaust seats in there I don't think 
think so. I don't think they put any hard exhaust seats in, and this head would definitely need the exhaust seats for the unleaded gas we have now. I guess we'll know after we clean it. We'll definitely be putting the hard exhaust seats in, and these intakes are down in a little bit deeper than I'd like to see. So let's plan on putting intake seats back in it. At least one intake valve guide will need replaced. We'll hone the other guides, maybe give it just a little more clearance than it had the last time around, unless we find something else along the way here yeah. that we can definitely blame the stuck guide on. So this rocker right here is our one in question. And looking at that rocker, everything is nice, appears to be like it should. Oil hole is clear. The exhaust next to it, same thing. I can, I can see down through that oil hole in the top. In hindsight, the next day after cleaning, we noticed that the rockers actually were pretty dirty still and did have a lot of grit in them, but we still don't think that was a major cause of the stuck valve. Everything looks like it should be. The ball on the adjusting screw here looks good, as does this one. The shaft itself, when I turn it over, the intake here is real nice. The exhaust is the one that actually has some pretty good wear on it, but that's not the one that we're having problems with. I don't think it has anything to do with the rockers or the rocker shaft. When we go back together with this, I'm gonna look around and see if we can find some better rocker shafts, but I'm not convinced we'll be able to find them. That stuff's getting a little hard to find. So let's go ahead and tear this rest way down because our customer thought it was locked up, but you know we've since figured out that this engine is, is not locked up. It turns just like it should. If he thought it was locked up, I think he was feeling the piston up against the valve, mm -hmm. making it turn hard. But he did say he'd had the pan off, he'd taken some bearings off, looked at it, so we need to go in there and make sure everything's okay. Maybe it's more interesting to have the camera on this side for this. <laughs> ah, nice. Okay, so we went through and pulled all the lifters out and numbered them, because probably reusing them. Yeah, most and, likely uh, reuse them again. I didn't hit record on the camera, so. So you didn't get us get to see us arguing about the way we were pulling them out and numbering them, because we never fight with each other. Well, there's the wrong way and there's my way. <laughs> ah, glad you think so. Anything left over there to take off? Bolt and some freeze plugs. Is that moving? Yeah. Yep, there you got one you can drill out. <laughs> that was stupid. By the way, these old motors, most of the bolts are grade two. <laughs> they twist really easy. Tell me if Colton starts coming. Must not be. Left. Oh, yeah, he's got most of them out already. Pan is clean. Other than excessive amount of that. Some of that looks a little shiny there. Well, yeah, get down in here. There is some sparkle in that oil there. Can you see that in there? chunks of something there yeah that's there's some metal there pretty good sized chunks so I'm not sure where that came from well look at this somebody has cut apart the screen they must cut it all apart to clean it and then they put this piece back on and just tack welded it all around the outside here does have a new oil pump in it he, he told me when we did it he wanted me to put a new oil pump in it but it it has one in it I can see some marks on the crank here. It looks like 30 on the, probably on the mains. Another mark yeah. down there, 20 on the, maybe 20 rods and 30 mains. So nothing too unusual there. This uses one bolt, pins the oil pump in. So I guess I'll start taking rod caps off. This has what they call pell nuts. Mm -hmm. Has lock nuts on all of the rods. I don't know if they really do any good, but they make you feel better. 
Made somebody feel better. Yeah. Okay, that's off. I already lost one. I'm probably laying right here and I can't see it. It's right here. See? Rods and caps are already numbered, so I'm not going to have to worry about numbering them. Ooh, that bearing's kind of scratchy looking. Yeah. Really scratchy. 30 under, 12 to 17. So I don't know if this was done recently or not then, or if the bearing's just been on the shelf a long time. Same with that one, it's pretty scratchy looking. I'll put some bolt boots on here so we don't, so we don't damage the scuffed up crank. Why don't you put your hand under that, good. Yeah, pistons do look real nice. There's a few little scratches in here, but there's nothing that'll hurt anything. You want to catch that piston? It'll be a lot like uh, catching babies. You know, you got one coming up here. I ain't gonna catch it. Somebody's gonna have to. Got it? There's a rod nut in there too. And the rod nuts, geez, look how worn it is from who knows how many times those have been on and off. We'll definitely put new rod nuts. Does that one look okay? I'd say it looks all right. There you go. Yeah, same thing again. Scratched up bearings, lots of, lots of dirt went through that already. So despite it not being tied up, it's a good thing we... Yeah, I think it's a good thing we went into it here deeper. It's pretty snug. It does turn a bit hard. This one he had put back on backwards. Maybe that's why it's snug. But it was just snug back down. It wasn't tight. There, I could tell there was two of them that were loose that he must have had out. Hmm. How does the pins feel? Are they free? Yeah. Okay, feels fine. Well, we want to check that piston real close, but I don't think that's going to most likely hurt it any. As far as running it again? Yeah, as far as yeah. reusing it again. Okay, that makes it feel better. I think it's just that cap turned uh -huh. around backwards that was making it a little bit tight. We're going to, we'll have to measure it to see how worn it is. Yeah, you got it. Fan them out. Pull the cam out. Look uh, all those lobes over and make sure they look good. I'd say so. Nothing. Huh? Nothing I'd say is concerning. Okay. That's good. We've got these uh, flat screws here. Originally, when those were put in, they take a punch or a little chisel there, punch, and peen just a little bit into the slot of the screw to keep from coming loose. But it doesn't look like, like it doesn't look like that got done. So hopefully they come loose easy. Yeah. You can tell this thing's been apart a few times with as rounded as the heads are on a lot of the bolts. Is there one hidden? Oh yeah, one hidden under the gasket there. Yep, one more. Now I think we're down to just silicon holding it on. Okay, now it's gonna be the interesting part. The early ones of these used shims under the main caps. The later ones did not. Always like working on the later ones that do not because they're easier to... Okay, you got any shims under there? Not that I can tell. Okay. Then this is the later one that does not use shims. Boy, those sure look rough for brand new. Okay, 
I'd kind of forgotten about this, but those are pinned bearings. Oh yeah. Rather than having the little tab on the side, they actually have a pin yeah. underneath them. Yeah, the, the bearing itself has a tit on the back side to hold it in place. 20? 30? Mine says 20. Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> huh. So I wondered what it really is. So we've got the front main bearing came out, says it's a 30, and the second main bearing says it's a 20. Vice versa, I think. No, 20 on the front, that was here, and 30 here. So that's telling me they maybe did some funny things to try to save the crankshaft on this. Hopefully that's what it's really ground to. And that would be okay if one is 20 and one is 30. It's a little unusual. Normally we try to make all of them the same to eliminate confusion. But we're gonna have to check that real close. And buying two bearing sets. Yeah, and have to buy two bearing sets to make that happen. So let's see what this one is. This is a thrust bearing here. It was riding real hard like that uh, dowel does not fit into the cap maybe quite like it should. Yeah. Were the others that way? Maybe a little bit, a little bit. No, not like this one is. That one is 30. 20, 30, 30. So let's see what's back here. And again, that one is rubbing pretty hard next to that dowel. And it says 30. Let's lift the crank up out of there and get the mic and measure it and see if that really is how they ground it. So that's really weird if that's what they did on this. Okay. I don't quite understand that. Pull them out, check them. Uh, I'll go look up some specs here of what that should be. This says 30. 30. They don't have some major. 30. 30. My eyes weren't lying to me, were they? On Those that. are all 30. That's a 20. So there's one, one half is an odd bearing? There's a 20 lower in the front, in the front bearing. What's the part number on those bearings? 2152 CP. They're Federal Mogul. Oh, they're Federal Mogul bearings? Yeah. Well, let me go get a Federal Mogul book. I think I have one over here. Uh, 235, 1940 to 63, line 26. So... That's saying 1956 to 62 engines that a shim set required, but those didn't have any shims in. And then uh, gives me standard shaft diameter dimensions. And that's also one of the things that's interesting about this engine is each main bearing uh, gets larger mm -hmm. from front to back. So they're a pain to grind to crank because every single journal you grind you're starting over again, setting your size. gauge up, yeah, setting your size up. Have you ever mixed a 20 and 30 shell? Not on the same journal. <laughs> the only time I've heard of that is when somebody was trying to cobble something together to take to the auction. Okay, so that is about 654 and some change, 2.654. So if that's 30 under, it would be 684, which there we are. So that... That one is definitely 30 under. Let's try the next one. With a 20 and a 30 bearing. Is that the one that had the? Yeah. Huh. So then this one measures 2.6, yeah, 2.685 and some change. Add 30 to that, so 2.715. So that journal is definitely 30. 2.716, so add 30 to that, 2.746. 
And there we are. So that one's 30. 2.748, add 30 to that, 78. Yeah, 2.777 and a half. Uh, so the crank is definitely ground 30 on the uh, mains all the way through as it is. Did we check rod bearings? We didn't check rod bearings. Uh, yet. I think we decided they were 30. Yeah, so that crank is ground 30 rods, 30 mains all the way through. But we have a 20 lower bearing on the front main. So why? Good question. Uh, somebody messed up? How do you mess that up? Let's, you want to measure just the thickness of the bearings? Uh, we could. Just with the calipers here. About 108. So this should be five less. 103. Yeah. Almost on the money. Five. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess I don't know if I'm holding that in front of the camera or not. <laughs> well, there's a word I want to say for what that is, but I try to keep it family friendly. It has rope seal in it. At least at one point in time, you could get uh, the neoprene seals for this. Mm -hmm. So we'll attempt to get that when we go back together. So now, does that, that looks like factory finish in that. It's not been, no. nothing been funny about line bore or anything. Um, but what, what's weird is the book says this is a block that should have a shim set in it, but it doesn't. And obviously it didn't need it or it would have had that crank locked up. Yeah. Although over the years doing these things, I've always been puzzled by which ones were supposed to have shims and which ones did not have shims. So what we want to do with this when we get ready to go back together is we need to torque those caps on and measure each one of those bores and figure out for sure if they're in spec. It'd be nice to know the logic behind whoever Whoever did I, that, what they were trying to accomplish. Well, what's the date on those bearings? 04 of 18 on both. Okay, so that's pre-COVID, unless they were manufactured and didn't get packaged until... Isn't it kind of weird time. that a 20 and a 30 would have the exact same date, though? Do they really? 04 18, 04 18. Well, a month. That's a month span. Yeah, but... Uh, um, makes you wonder if they were packaged wrong. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking is they were packaged wrong. And nobody ever checked. Right. Yeah. Whoever assembled this motor uh, just took them out of the package and put them in and assumed everything was okay. Everybody's human. Mistakes get made. I mean, the rest of this looks decent. Pr pretty decent. I, I'm not seeing a lot wrong with this motor. Let's get it cleaned up. Probably torque your caps on after it's clean. Measure it. See what we've got. Measure the cylinders. See if they're good enough that we can just run a hone through them and uh, get a good cross hatch going in them again. Check the deck on the block. I'll have to check that crank a little closer, see if I can just polish it. I hope so. The and he The uh, head oiled from over there though, right? Yeah. I was just trying to picture which way the oil all moved through if wouldn't it have oil pressure issue being that loose? Uh, yeah, I would have thought it would have. But if this only ran 10 minutes, he probably didn't run it long enough. Maybe he got lucky that that valve yeah. tied up before the crank. Yeah, before he ruined the crank and the block both. It started out, I was like, oh, this will be interesting to see what's wrong with it. And then you figure out it's not actually locked up. And I'm like, well, this just got boring. <laughs> but then it got interesting again. Look at all yeah. the junk under there. They didn't have that off when they cleaned the motor the last time. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. That's, that's bad. Yeah, that's why the crankshaft. I think baffles are probably one of the main things that people skimp on when they're cleaning. 
the take the time to take them off. Okay, so that ready for the oven? I think it's ready for the oven. I think we clean it up and you know check a lot of things and hopefully the last guy's machine work is good to where we don't have to do very much machine work. We'll order up a kit with bearings and rings, probably fix that one valve guide. I was noticing on the valves they use the old style non-plated stem exhaust valves in this. Although they're brand new and look fine, let's upgrade it and put the chrome plated stem valves in like mm -hmm. the newer small blocks use their same valve as a small block. Kind of interesting. Yeah, let's wrap this up, clean up our mess, and I'm more than ready for bed. You keep me up too late. This was your idea to do it at late at night. <laughs> I didn't want to do I'd it. I'd like to work during norming, normal work hours, but... Well, the trouble is when we try to do it during normal hours, we keep having customers come in and interrupt us, so... All right. After hours, we don't have to deal with that. I just have to deal with you. See you in the next one. Okay, see you later.